Hello, this is Mike Anderson of Collision Advice, and on behalf of Collision Advice, Nissan, and Infinity, our webinar will begin in approximately four minutes. Hello, this is Mikey Anderson of Collision Advice. On behalf of Collision Advice and Nissan Infinity, our webinar will begin in approximately three minutes. Hello, this is Mikey Anderson of Collision Advice. And on behalf of Collision Advice and Nissan Infinity, our webinar will begin in approximately two minutes. Hello, this is Mikey Anderson of Collision Advice. And on behalf of Collision Advice, Nissan and Infinity, our webinar will begin in approximately one minute. Hello, this is Mikey Anderson of Collision Advice. Today, thank you for joining us for our monthly OEM webinar in conjunction with Nissan Infinity entitled Learn to Research and Research to Learn. First of all, to start our webinar off today, all participants have been muted. However, questions are encouraged. So to ask any questions during the webinar, please feel free to text my assistant, Tiffany Driggers at 703-898-0715. So again, if you have any questions during this webinar for Mike Anderson Collision Advice or the team from Nissan and Infinity, please feel free to text your questions to Tiffany at 703-898-0715. Now, when you text your question, please identify your name and your organization you're with so that we may re recognize you. 
In addition, please understand this webinar will absolutely run more than an hour. And we understand that as a collision repair, an insurance, or a vendor, you may have to step away. If that happens, please understand we are recording this webinar and it will be made available to you for free on behalf of Collision Advice, Nissan and Infinity. We'd also like to thank the team at Nissan and Infinity for their support in building the content for this webinar, as well as for their agreeing to participate in the webinar to answer any questions that you may text in. And we'd also like to give a shout out for Sika, who helps us to keep everybody straight when it comes to software and hardware and all of our computer software needs. So let's get started. First of all, there were a lot of people that helped to contribute to this webinar today. First of all, we had uh, myself, Mike Anderson. We had Will Latta from Latta Brothers. And I gotta give a shout out to Will because I really never really understood how in depth Nissan's OEM repair procedures and Infinities were until Will introduced it to me. We'd also like to thank Jake Rodenroth from Aztec, but most importantly, we'd like to thank the team at Nissan Infinity, Mark Zoba, Justin Miller, and many others. So let's go ahead and get started. First of all, we always have to start out reading the antitrust guidelines. It is understood that in today's session, we will not discuss any issues that would violate antitrust guidelines. Avoiding violations of the antitrust laws is the responsibility and legal obligation of the business owner. Any discussion of current prices or discounts where the competitor should be avoided. In our industry, this includes discounts, time hourly rates, charges to insurance companies, individuals, fleet owners, dealers, or other shops to repair vehicles. And please understand that surveys of prices, discounts, and costs are permissible, but only under strict guidelines, and only if they're not part of a conspiracy to fix prices or otherwise restrain trade. Cost studies that lead to price fixing or price stabilizing agreements would violate both the United States and Canadian antitrust laws. Remember, the prices charged must be calculated and determined by the business owner alone. These prices should take into account the cost of doing business and include allowances for a reasonable profit. All content of this workshop is based on standard economic and management principles. Profit margins, labor rates, etc., used in this presentation are to be taken as examples only. And the intent of this workshop or this webinar is to provide attendees with basic management skills, leaving them free to determine their own individual rates, profit percentages, and other operating management aspects of their businesses on a strictly independent basis using generally accepted management principles. So why do we do these webinars? Well, as many of you have heard before, each quarter, my company, Collision Advice, in conjunction with the Crash Network, we actually take and do quarterly surveys where we ask shops how often they get paid for certain non-included operations from the insurers. However, one of the other things we do is we also survey shops how often they research home repair procedures and what means do they use to use that. And what we find is that actually less than 42% of all shops are currently researching home repair procedures in 2016 and in 2017, 48.8%. In our opinion, this should be 100%, and we're hoping today's webinar will help you to see why we feel that way. So what is our desired outcome? Well, each month, we actually partner with a different OEM to do a webinar to teach you how to utilize that OEM manufacturer's website directly, from understanding how to log in, how much the website or OEM repair procedures cost, and how to navigate different parts of the website to ensure safe and proper repairs as well as any other resources that that OE manufacturer may provide to you, the collision repair, to ensure safe and proper repairs. So let's start off today with Nissan Infinity. First of all, we'd like to just take a moment and we'd like to do a little bit of a poll question because we'd like to know who our audience is. So in just a moment, you're gonna see us actually launch a poll and you should see that on your screen right now. If you would just take a moment and take this poll, what segment of the industry do you represent? Are you a collision repair? Are you an insurer? Are you a parts equipment or a finished vendor, an OEM manufacturer, or another? Currently, only 1% of our attendees have actually taken the poll. So if you would please go ahead and take the poll, we would greatly appreciate it. Looks like the results are coming in fast, Team Nissan. And right now, we have 86% of the attendees are collision repairs. We have 3% are insurers. 2% are parts equipment refinished vendors. 2% OEMs and 4% other. Currently, 53% of our attendees have registered for this webinar or have taken the poll. Let's continue to look at that. 71% of the attendees have voted. Bear with us one moment. All right, let's go ahead and let's lock the poll. So currently right now, ladies and gentlemen, it looks like 87% of our attendees are collision repairers, 1% of our attendees are insurers, 2% parts, equipment, or refinished vendors, 3% OEM, and 6% other. By the way, I'd like to give a shout out to you, the collision repair industry. This is the third OEM webinar we've done, and this month, 
We broke the record. So Erica Schaefer from Chrysler, Fiat Chrysler, I'm really sorry, but Nissan Infinity has jumped out there and taken the lead. So ladies and gentlemen, the first thing we're going to talk about is how to access Nissan and Infinity repair procedures. First of all, Nissan Infinity's repair procedures, you have to pay to subscribe to those. Now they can be accessed through two different websites, nissan-techinfo.com or infinity-techinfo.com. Now once you log in, you're going to see one of the two screens that you see on your screen now. Now, let's continue through and help you to understand more how to navigate the website. First of all, a couple of things that we learned from our team and our friends at Nissan Infinity. You must use Internet Explorer. I will tell you, I made the mistake of trying to log on through my Google Chrome as well as Bing. And I found out the website was not working properly, and I reached out to the team at Nissan Infinity, and they said, Mike, you must use Internet Explorer. So make sure you use Internet Explorer. The second thing is you need to make sure you have the most recent version of the Adobe Reader. And you can download that at www.adobe.com. And last but not least, you want to make sure that any pop-up blockers on your internet browser are disabled. Now, keep in mind, when you go into Nissan Infinity's OEM repair procedures, they've got a lot of hyperlinks. It's a really interactive OEM repair procedure website. And if your hyperlinks do not work, I will tell you now, it's probably because of one of the above reasons. You either don't have an Internet Explorer, you don't have the most recent version of Adobe.com, or you have pop-up pop blockers. Now, once you log in, the next thing you'll do is you'll actually take and you will select the country that you are looking for OEM repair procedures for. You'll notice in this case, what I did was I hovered over North America and that popped up and allowed me to select that. Now, our Canadian friends would do the same. Now, once you go on, you're going to see a website that looks like this. What we're using right now for our demo for this webinar purposes is nissan-techinfo.com. But understand Infinity's website will look the same. Now, when you go on here, you're going to see several tabs on your right, as, as well as several options on the main screen. So what we will do is we're going to actually view select here where it says purchase subscription for viewing publications. Now, keep in mind, once I log onto the website, I haven't even put in my username and password yet. I'm going to go right here where it says purchase subscription for viewing publications. Now, once I do that, this is really, really awesome that Nissan Infinity does this. And I love this feature about there. What it says is it tells me what's included in this subscription. So if I go and I'm going to select the service manual or one of their online subscriptions, it tells me, for example, in this case, that I'll get when I go to pay to subscribe, I'll have access to the service manuals, TSBs, the Tech Talk, which is Nissan Infinity's magazine, as well as some e-learning training modules, which we're really going to love. It also helps us to have access to both Nissan and Infinity websites. And keep in mind, this will be for any Nissan or Infiniti vehicle since 1989 or, or newer. You also note that Nissan Infiniti also allows us to see what's not included when we subscribe to this specific type of subscription. And that's going to be things such as software, diagnostic software, ECU programming, etc. And that's where you may have to subscribe or purchase the consult diagnostic tool from Nissan. Okay, so what does it cost? Well, first of all, a one-year subscription is $720. A 90-day subscription is $225, 30-day subscription is $75, but you can also get a one-day subscription for $19.99. Now, I really love this feature for Nissan Infinity because, you know, if you don't do a lot of Nissan's and Infinities, well, you can just subscribe to it for one day. Now, here's an awesome thing. If you are a certified collision center, you get a free subscription to Nissan's technical information. So high five and a shout out to Nissan Infinity. So Mark Zoba and Justin Miller, thanks to you and your team for making this available to certified Nissan shops. Now, keep in mind, if you are, uh, have a question during the webinar, don't forget, text your webinar in or your question to Tiffany at 703-898-0715. Okay, so now once I go and choose the subscription type I want, you'll set it up and you'll get a username and password. You'll notice on the lower left-hand part of your screen, this is where you will log in at. You will put in your user ID and your password. Okay, now once I log in, you're going to see a couple icons. So it's really important you understand that throughout this uh, you navigating Nissan Infinity's OEM repair procedures, their direct website, you're going to see these icons quite often. So I wanted to put these in the very beginning. Anytime you see something that looks like that little blue eyeball, that means it's available for you to view online. If you see there's like an eyeball with a red line through it, it says subscription required to, to view. Now I want to tell you a little lesson I learned. I went to Nissan's website, I saved it as my favorite, and when I went to log on, I kept getting the eyeball with the red line through it. What happened was I forgot to log in. So if you go and you go and subscribe to this and you go right to the website, keep in mind, it doesn't remember your username and password. So what happens is you have to log in. So if you see that, it doesn't mean you don't have access to it. It means you haven't logged in with your username and password. 
The next thing is if you see the little thing looks like a CD or DVD, that means you can actually purchase a CD or DVD on this. Now, for those of you shops that are doing a lot of your calibrations in-house, you're going to want to maybe purchase that DVD so you understand how to do a proper calibration, which we'll talk about today. If you see something that looks like a little book or a textbook, that means it's available in printed format. And then for those of you old school guys and girls, you'll see something that says VHS tape. And then if you see something that looks like a file folder, that means that that specific document is available for download. Now, I'm going to refer back to these icons later on throughout our webinar. Now, first thing I want to do is I want to give you an overview of the tabs on the right-hand side. Now, keep in mind, this webinar is going to be about 70 to 80 minutes long. We're not going to have a chance to cover everything. So what we're going to do is just hit these very quickly. First of all, select the What's New tab. Now, i got to tell you, this is something I have not seen with any other vehicle manufacturer yet. And that is that whenever Nissan makes a change or an update or modification to their own repair procedures, they let you know right here. Now, this is really awesome for me because I had another OEM manufacturer recently that I was in their OEM repair procedures, and I saw that something had changed to that. Well, had I not looked that up, I would not have known it changed. In this case, Nissan lets you know, and I think this is an awesome feature. So when I log into the website, the first thing I like to do is go into the What's New section and just scroll through here really quickly to see if there's anything that might have changed in regards to what I'm going to be researching. So shout out to Nissan Infinity because it's the first OEM that I've seen that actually has a section on their website where it says what's new. Now you'll see that little eyeball. That means I can actually view it. Now, again, keep in mind, if you don't see the eyeball, it's because you didn't enter in your username and password. The next tab you're going to see is technical training. Now when we slip on this tab, you're going to see right here that it tells you that Nissan Infinity have some different training options for you. They have some classroom materials, some e-learning modules, as well as some training videos. Now, while these resources are mostly mechanical related, I will tell you I found great value in reviewing them, specifically the one that said new model features. Let me give you an example here. What I did is when I clicked it on new model features, you'll see right here it says select the product. 2013 Nissan Altima new model training. I got to tell you, this was very valuable for me because when we get new vehicles in, like a 2018, I got to tell you, I can't keep up with all the cars that are made today and all the different new safety and comfort features on the vehicle. So I encourage you, if it's a brand new model year and you've never fixed one of these vehicles before, download that document so you understand what type of safety and comfort features are on there, so you understand what to do a diagnostic scan for to ensure that it's working properly with an output or functionality test but it also is critical to you to understand that when you quality control and inspect the vehicle to make sure that all these things are working. Now, you can see here where it says e-learning modules. That's another option for us. And it says here, the e-learning courses are available for download only if you have a valid online subscription. So again, it tells you, hey, if you want to download an e-learning module, like for example, on the GTR or for example, on Xterra, this is another great thing. So, you know, everybody has a different learning style. Some people read by watching, you know, they're very visual learners. Some people are kinesthetic hands-on. Some people are auditory by listening. And I think this is a great asset for Nissan Infinity and their own repair procedures because they give it to you in writing, but they also have some things where you can take e-learning classes that, classes that are narrated where you can actually listen to it. Now, the next one is obviously if you want to get a videotape. And keep in mind, even though it says videotapes, it also means that things are available in DVD, not just VHS. Now, you'll notice one I highlighted here, and it says millimeter wave sensor alignment. Now, if you, again, you're a shop that has your own factory scan tool like the consult, then what you can do is you've got the targets and the equipment. You may want to get this DVD and watch it so you understand how to do a safe and proper repair. I also found that this DVD would be a great way to educate insurance carriers about whether something's required or not for you to do a safe and proper repair. So awesome section. Now, the next one is accessory instructions. Now, when we clicked on that, what we saw was that you have to go into this section and you have to actually select a vehicle. Now you'll see where it says for this market, North America, it does not say US, so this would apply to US and Canada. And it says in language, English. Now you could select French if you were in Canada, like Quebec. And then obviously what's gonna happen is you select the model of the year. So in this case, I typed in, for an example, a Rogue. And what I did is I put 2018 and I put ex exterior accessory type. What this does is it tells me all the different accessories that may be on this specific 2018 Nissan Rogue. Because we have to understand, a lot of times customers will buy things, uh, order a brand new vehicle, and when the dealership goes to deliver it, what they do is they add factory accessories to the vehicle. Now, what happens here is I can see the little eyeball. I can visually view a document, or you'll see there's a folder that says, hey, you can actually download this. So in this example, on this Nissan Rogue, you'll see it says Hatch Tent Universal. 
Now, what that is, is that is a tent that can be attached to the hatch for people that do a lot of camping, etc. In this case, I selected the eye icon to view it, or again, the folder to download it. And what it did was, is it pulled it up for me and says, hey, this is the description. It's a hatch tent. And what it does is it tells me the different accessories that would come with this vehicle. So let's say, for example, that this was stored in the rear of the vehicle. The vehicle had a rear end collision and this got damaged. Well, now you have a way to understand how this accessory feature is supposed to work. So again, I'm giving you an example, but there's tons of other accessories in here as well. Now, the next one is technical magazines. Now, when you select on this, you'll see that there are a lot of different options here where you can download all the different uh, modules. Now, again, there's not a folder there to download it. So what you have to do is click on the eyeball. It allows you to view the document, and then you can just hit the print option and print it as a PDF. So let me say that again. If I want to view any of these back issues or a current issue of Nissan or Infinity's technical magazine, understand this. You click the eyeball, and it allows you to view it. You cannot download it. There's not a folder. What you have to do is print it as a PDF. So again, don't forget about those icons on the left side of your screen. Now, one of the things that I noticed was that in some of the older versions of Tech Talk, it actually had PDFs with a table of content on the left-hand side. But Nissan and Infinity have moved to a much more colorful publication. And I got to tell you, Nissan Infinity, I really like this. Very colorful and jumps out. You'll see this would be like the cover of one of the publications. And I find that there's a ton of information in there that has to do a lot with blind spot monitors and calibrations and et cetera. And while a lot of it's mechanical, it's definitely pertinent to us as a collision repair. I would encourage you to print as a PDF and then share it with your team. The next option is purchase tools and equipment. Now, I got to tell you, I'm really excited to share this one with you, ladies and gentlemen. So hold on to your socks and buckle up, buckle up, right? One of the things that I found out that Nissan Infinity does is if you are a certified collision repairer, you actually can get special discounted pricing on equipment such as ProSpot, Carliner, Hunter, Rotary Lifts, and so much more. When I logged into this portion of the website, I was amazed. I had never seen anything like this. I mean, they had like a refinish section where you can get discounts on like the Global GFS Revo units and spray boosts. And also check this out, ladies and gentlemen, certified collision centers can also receive up to a 15% certified bonus cash back on qualifying orders. And last but not least, new in 2018, Nissan Infinity has also arranged for you as a certified Nissan collision repair shop to have special financing opportunities on equipment orders for qualifying collision shops. Ladies and gentlemen, this is amazing. What OEM manufacturer out there, ladies and gentlemen, gives you a section where you can purchase equipment through their website as well as get discounts and bonus cash. So Mark Zoba, I know you're on the line with us, sir. Could you or your team at Nissan Infinity maybe just give us a little insight as to this? I'm really excited about it. Certified collision repair program with bonus cash back. So Mark, can you tell us a little bit more? Uh, yeah, so uh, again, as part of the Technique program, uh, we, we've set up special pricing with uh, a lot of vendors. So even if you are not certified, you still have an opportunity to get uh, tools and equipment uh, at prices that uh, we've used our Nissan uh, leverage with all these different uh, suppliers uh, to provide uh, special pricing out there. And again, if you're a certified shop, then you can also... Uh, get that additional uh, bonus cash that was available. So last year we paid out over $175,000 to collision shops uh, that uh, upgraded their equipment. Uh, and it's our way of just making sure there's an easy way for you guys to have the right tools uh, and equipment out there to fix our vehicles correctly. Mark, thank you so much. You know, Mark, I got to tell you and your team at Nissan Infinity, I hear so many collision repairs out there in the industry where they say, man, I'm, I'm spending all this money on certification. I'm not seeing a return on my investment. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're a collision repairer and you're not seeing a return on your investment, it's because you're not engaged. Because if you're engaged, you would know about this program. And ladies and gentlemen, I mean that in love, but Nissan and Infinity, hats off to you and a shout out. That's some, that's some smoking hot stuff right there, guys and girls. All right, let's go to the next slide. The next thing you're going to see at the bottom on the right-hand side is recall information. Now, when you select this, this allows you to look up any open recall on a Nissan. Now, there's two things I like about this. First of all, you have to understand what's important to consumers. What are consumers looking for when they go to choose a collision repair shop? They're looking for three things, trust, empathy, and direction. Now, say that with me again, trust, empathy, and direction. We call that TED for short. So the first thing a consumer is looking for when they go to choose a body shop is they want to feel like they can trust you. What better way to do that than when they bring their Nissan or Infinity in and I go to this website and put their specific VIN number in and it tells me any open recalls on their vehicle. 
And now I've done that to help you know, gain the customer's trust. I'm like, Mr. Jones, I just want to let you know, I just researched your VIN number and you've got some recalls. Maybe we can assist you with getting those taken care of. So understand this is very VIN specific. So I did a little test when I was using this website. I had a friend of mine that had a Nissan and uh, he ha I put his VIN number in and it came up and it showed me there were some recalls on it. Well, I had another friend that had a Nissan Infinity, and I put their VIN number in, and it came up and didn't show the recall. And the reason it wasn't is because it was already taken care of. So that's what's awesome about this, because it's very VIN specific. Now, you'll also notice at the bottom of this website, again, we haven't even gotten to the home repair procedures yet, the Nissan Infinity provide us some really good uh, links. And you'll see right there where it says, uh, we support uh, NASTEF, uh, Nissan USA, Nissan for parts and go to Infinity Tech Info. Now this is really awesome, right? Because if you're logged into the Nissan website, I don't have to log back out and go to the Infinity website to look at Infinity. I can just click on that little link right there and it takes me right to Infinity's Tech Info website. So that's what's really awesome. I don't have to log in and log out. Um, all I can do is click on that link, it takes me right to it. You also see some other links there and we're gonna cover them in this webinar. So how do you use the Nissan Tech Info website? Well, the first thing you're gonna do is, you're gonna to wanna to click on, so remember, the one in the center says purchase subscription, that's where you're gonna go through and purchase your subscription for either a day, you know, a week, a month, a year, whatever the case may be. Now, if I go to the left, once I log in and I purchase my subscription, I'm gonna go right there where the orange and star and arrow is at, I'm gonna hit view Nissan publications. So once I select that, you're gonna see on the right-hand side, there's a drop-down box, and it says to begin, select criteria and or enter text to find. So you can see where it says all, where it says like service manual or body repair manual. In this case, what we're gonna to cover today's webinar is we're gonna do service manual. We're gonna walk you through how to find things in the service manual, because I think that's really critical to you. I will tell you, I am proud to announce that ladies and gentlemen, I found so much cool stuff for Nissan Infinity, I couldn't fit it into one webinar. So Team Nissan Infinity have agreed to do a part two with us for this webinar. And when we do that, we're gonna take you through the other options that are available here. So for today's webinar, we're gonna focus on the service manual. Now what I'll do is when I go over here to where it says service manual, you'll see where it says uh, you can search by publication title or any publications to specific models and years. So in this case, I selected the option publication type service manual. And then what I did was I'll go in and put the bacon model. Now let me just help you understand a little bit about how their search procedure works, right? First of all, the contents of all the boxes are used together. So that means when you put in the year, the make and model, the more may, year, make and model you get, the more it narrows down your search. For example, if you select 2000 for model year, and then you select service manuals, and then you go from there and put the type of uh, model year, like Nissan Altima, ladies and gentlemen, what it will do is it'll narrow down your search for you. Now, if you leave a box empty, it still allows you to search, right? So if you're not quite sure of the year for whatever reason, you can still do a search. Keep in mind also, the way the search feature works with Nissan Infinity is, the search matches all of the characters you type. So if you're not sure about a word, type in only part of it. For example, if you're not sure if Nissan Infinity spells seatbelt, all one word seatbelt or seat spash, space belt, just type in the word seat and then it'll pull it up for you. So that was another little tip that we learned. Now, in this case right here, we're gonna select service manual. And you'll see for this model, we selected the Armada. So once we selected that, we're now gonna go for any year, or you can again choose your language, and what we're gonna do is, we now pull up a Nissan Armada. Now when I pulled up Nissan Armada, you'll see right here, it says 2018 Nissan Armada service manual. Now the eyeball again, the blue eye means I can view it. The little CD DVD means I can actually purchase it on CD or DVD ROM. And if you look over there where the little uh, line is through that, that means I don't have access to that. Now in this case, what we're gonna do is, we're gonna look at 2018 Nissan Armada service manual. Now when I selected that, what you're gonna see is you're gonna understand this, right? On the 2018, any 2018 vehicle you look up, Nissan uses what's called an HTML5 interface. So when you pull up any 2018 or newer Nissan or Infinity OEM repair procedure, it's gonna have the look and feel of what you see on the screen right here. Now, anything prior to 2018 is going to be a different look and feel because it's in the Adobe PDF, and we're going to show you that in a moment. So if you ever go to view a 2018 or newer, and it doesn't have the same look and feel as an older Nissan or Infiniti, it's just because Nissan and Infiniti are transitioning over to a newer, uh, more user-friendly uh, format. So in this case right here, 2018 Nissan Armada, what you'll see is on the left-hand side, you'll see a series of drop-downs. You also see EWD at the top left-hand side, and that means electrical wiring diagrams. 
And then you'll see title search, whereas if I want to put in a specific, uh, you know, like seat or seat belt, and then you see where symptom code, that's another great feature that Nissan Infinity has, is I can put in a DTC, if I get that from my scan tool, it'll help me to research that much more quicker. Now, if I go here and I look at a 2017 Nissan Armada service manual, and I select that, this is the look and feel you're going to get. You'll notice this is an Adobe PDF, and this is why it's important to have the latest version of the Adobe PDF. Now, I'll tell you, when I first logged into this website and I started using the Nissan Infinity website, what I saw was I was clicking on some of these options, like where it says engine or engine mechanical, and my hyperlinks wouldn't work. So I had to call my trusty IT assistant, Tracy Dombrowski, who could not join us today, and Tracy said, Mike, you don't have the latest version of Adobe downloaded. And I didn't, ladies and gentlemen. So if your hyperlinks don't work within the PDF, understand it's either because you didn't go through Internet Explorer or you don't have the most recent version of the Adobe PDF. So we're going to show you again today how to navigate through the older versions of Adobe PDF as well as the new versions. So you'll notice right here in the PDF version on this 2017 uh, Nissan Armada, you'll see right here that um, on the left-hand side, there's an interactive um, of, of like a table of contents. But on the right-hand side, one of the mistakes I made was I was trying to click on like the G or the H to take me to that section, and it doesn't do that. All you have to do is select like where the terminology is at. And this, for example, I put body repair. So what I did is if I checked that hyperlink, it would automatically open up to this right here. Now, when you pull up the body repair manual, there's two things you're going to see on the left-hand side in the table of contents. You're going to see where it says fundamentals. The second thing you're going to see is repair information type 1 or type 2, and we'll talk about that in a moment. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to select where it says fundamentals. Now, when I open up fundamentals and I click on that, that little plus sign is going to open it up, and now you're going to see all these fundamentals. One of the things I found in here that I liked was where it said electric resistance spot welding. And when I selected this, I saw that Nissan says this, check by using test piece, confirmation before operation. Clamp both test pieces together so they will not slip or move during welding, and weld together test pieces with the same thickness as the panel to be welded. Break the weld by twisting and examine the brake. This is clearly where Nissan, as well as if this was an Infinity vehicle, says we must perform a destructive test weld before welding on the vehicle. So ladies and gentlemen, just as we've seen with all the other OEMs, we need to set up and perform destructive test welds. And you'll see that I found this in the electronic, I'm sorry, excuse me, electric resistance spot welding section. Now, when you scroll down on this vehicle, you'll say, also see when I scroll down, it says with this test, a hole should be made on one test piece by tearing at the welded portion. So basically, it tells us how to perform the destructive test weld. So this is something else I really liked about um, Nissan Infinity is they actually tell us how to conduct a uh, destructive test weld. And keep in mind, ladies and gentlemen, this is a not included operation. And if you go to the website, www.degweb.org, and you submit a question, you can come back and get an answer from CCC Metro Auto Techs telling you it's not included operation. Now, the next thing I did is I went down to where it says under the welding section. I'm still under the welding section. I'm still under the fundamentals tab. I clicked on partial replacement of a panel welded panel. And what it did is this is where um, Nissan tells me what I need to do in order to repair a welded on component. And you'll see in this case that they tell me that I actually need to apply a weld through primer. And so it tells me the things that I need to do, and then I also need to seam seal, seam seal the area after it's been welded in. Now, in the essence of time, I'm going through this rather quickly, but our goal is to hopefully create awareness for you so that you understand how to find these in the future. Keep in mind, this webinar will be recorded, so you can go back if you can't take notes. Now, I hey, also went into the same section. Okay, Tiffany, uh, you said we have a question. Tiffany, go ahead. Do we've had a couple, but this one is asking, can I do VIN specific year, make, and model searches? Okay, so uh, Nissan's website uh, does not pull up the OM repair procedures based off of the VIN number. So you'll have to put in the year, make, and model yourself, and then that will pull up that specific repair manual. Uh, Team Nissan or Infinity, do you have any other comments you'd like to add to that? Uh, that's the correct answer. We don't have a VIN search in there. Okay. Um, so the, the answer is no, it does not decode by VIN. It only decodes by VIN the recalls, but over repair procedures, you're going to have to put in the, the year, make, and model. What was another question you had, Tiffany? The other questions are a lot of uh, in reference to getting the discount if their Nissan certification comes through Assured Performance, or can it only be through Nissan directly? So um, I, I guess we need clarity on that. So Mark uh, and Justin, the team Nissan Infinity, um, the uh, the free subscription to the OEM repair procedures, do they go through uh, 
APN, Assured Performance Network, to get that, and as well as the equipment rebates or discounts. Do they go through APN or do they contact you directly? That would be the two questions I think they're asking. Yeah, so Mike, the way that works, it comes directly to Nissan. So when uh, a shop is uh, enrolled in certification and becomes certified, uh, someone from my team, uh, Sarah, reaches out to the shop with their uh, information to log into their technical uh, information site and gives them their password and login credentials. I'm sorry. Okay. Get, yeah. So, so they get the instructions on how to log in, uh, and then so they get that directly from us. So, uh, and then the TechMate stuff, they have to contact uh, TechMate directly, uh, and then uh, we validate the, the the purchases along with TechMate, uh, and then if the shop earns the the rebate, then we pay that directly to the shop. Okay, thank you, Mark. And for those uh, that are attendees here, please understand TechMate is the section of the website that you go to. It is the website you go to that has all the equipment and vendor lists. So Tiffany, we'll come back to you for a few more questions in a moment. You'll notice here where it says partial replacement of panel. This is another thing that we researched and it says ultra high strength steel means the steel from 980 MPA or higher. And it says, if such a part is damaged, you must replace the part. So ladies and gentlemen, it's really important when you write an estimate that you understand when you're looking and, and, and analyzing any damage on a Nissan Infinity, you absolutely need to understand what that component is made out of. Because if it is made out of 980 or higher UHSS, ultra high strength steel, ladies and gentlemen, you must replace that part. It cannot be repaired. Now, let's go right here. Another thing that Nissan Infinity has, and again, we're still under the fundamentals section. It says frame repair, general information. You notice how we're opening up any of the, all the plus signs on your left-hand side and they open up to additional areas. This tells us here what Nissan Infinity's recommendations or requirements are in utilizing heat in regards to performing structural repairs. Now, the next thing you're gonna see after fundamentals is you're gonna see where it says repair information type one and repair information type two. When you select this, you want to always select repair information type one. And here's why. Because repair information type one is for the United States and Canada. So unless you're in Mexico, you will never use repair information type two. So please make sure you always select repair information type one to access your body repair manuals. So let's take a look and see what this tab will do for us. First of all, once you select repair information type one, you'll, you'll see a little overview on how to use the panel. Below that, you'll see where it says vehicle information. Now when I open that up, you'll see it it has precautions, preparations, R&I, and service data and specifications. Now let's take a look first of all at the vehicle information. Now keep in mind, this is an older Nissan Infiniti, meaning 2017 or older, and that's gonna have your Adobe format. So when I select on this, one of the things I saw under vehicle information was it actually identified for me all my different paint colors, trim codes, and where hard clear was utilized, right? So you'll actually take a look at this and it shows you a diagram on this specific vehicle, what the paint codes are and what materials are used. Again, this is found under the vehicle information tab. It's very important for you as an estimator to understand this when you're writing your estimate. You'll see in this case, it also identifies for me uh, which vehicles are two-stage, which ones are three-stage, and which ones also have pearl. So if I identify something that's a three-stage vehicle or a pearl, then you know what? I may have to consider submitting an invoice on this for proper reimbursement for my pay materials. Now, another thing we've seen on this same tab is under repair information type one, is we went through and we selected vehicle information. This here tells us each component and what it's made out of. Now, remember I told you before, Nissan Infiniti says anything that's 980 or, 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 or higher, you cannot repair it, you must replace it. So as I start to go through this and I look at the different components, for example, 980 to 1350, it tells me the lower dash center, the inner rocker panel, the rear seat cross member, the inner silver pillar panel. It starts to tell me what components are made out of that, that substrate. And if that substrate's damaged, again, according to Nissan Infiniti, you cannot repair it and you must replace it. Now, another thing under here is, is preparation. You know, I'm sure we're all familiar with the lawsuit, unfortunately, in our industry where you know, there were some questions as to whether or not you can use certain adhesives or foams. And ladies and gentlemen, what I tell everybody is, if you wanna know what foams, adhesives, or seam sealers to use, always defer to the OEM manufacturer's recommendations. You'll see in this instance, uh, Nissan actually specifies for me that there is a specific 3M product that is actually approved to do the specific application on an inner wheelhouse. And you'll see that it says 3M Auto Mix Flexible Foam 08463 or equivalent. Again, how do you know if it's equivalent? That's where you'd have to check with your manufacturer. Now, we can also drop down on the same tab where it says body component parts. 
This kind of complements what was in that itemized list of the substrates. Remember how I told you initially, Nissan Infinity say anything 980 or higher, you must replace it. You cannot repair it. And then we saw the list that told us all the components. Well, you know what? Everybody's a different learner. This here actually shows you the substrates. So when I start to look at this uh, diagram of parts based on how they're color coded, it helps me to know what they're made out of. So this kind of complements the prior substrate list that I showed you in text format. Now, dropping down to corrosion protection, we'll see here that uh, Nissan or Infinity again, we're using Nissan as an example, but the same uh, process would apply to Infinity. But if we go down through here, it tells us what type of corrosion protection Nissan or Infinity may use. You also see that it says caution, confined paint removal during the welding operations to an absolute minimum. But what that means is that Nissan and Infinity, they both treat their uh, sheet metal and all their structural components with something called galvanization, right? And that galvanization is made to help that thing to hold up so it doesn't corrode. So what they're saying is basically, don't remove any more of that than you have to. Now, you know, one of the things we always talk about when we teach an estimating class is if you want to get paid, your opinion doesn't mean jack. The only thing matters is what you can prove, substantiate, or justify. And what we do is we encourage shops to stick to the facts. Is what you're asking for required? Is it included? Is there a predetermined time? If not, what is it worth? And you'll see right here that Nissan actually spells out for us under the corrosion protection area that on this specific door that we're showing you a picture of in a graphic, that we have to apply cavity wax to the lower part of this door. That is absolutely a way for me to prove to an insurer that I would need to apply cavity wax or rust proofing to the inside of the door. So this is going to help us to prove those things that we need to do and make sure we put an accurate line note on our estimate, as well as take a copy of this and attach it as file documentation. You also see here that it talks about undercoating. One of the things that caught me off guard is it says precautions and undercoating. Always apply uh, bitumen wax after applying undercoating. I got to tell you, I wasn't aware of that. How many of you are applying cavity wax over top of the undercoating? Now, another area we did is we continued just to scroll down in the same document, and it tells us where the specific vehicle is seam sealed at. So again, we can prove to an insurance carrier any place that we may need seam sealer. You'll see in the left quarter panel on that diagram, shows us that there's seam sealer at the outer wheelhouse, around the fuel light, uh, fuel door pocket, and also along the roof area, and also the rear body panel and tail lamp pocket. Again, you'll see here on a door, it also shows you, and you have to seam seal a bolted on component. Another thing we can do is when we're under repair information type one, is you can go to where it says service data and specifications. Now this is where you're gonna find like any of your vehicle dimensions. So it's gonna show you what dimensions it are uh, on a vehicle. If you're trying to diagnose the vehicle with something like the matrix one, now, if you have like a chief or a car liner, you may already have those measurements. Now again, you can also go to where it says quick reference index, which is at the very top. When you do that, that's gonna pull up the complete table of contents. And what that's gonna do is show you the different components, like a door, a fender, a quarter panel, et cetera. And what we can do is we can select that. So basically the quick reference index is kind of like your home button. Anytime you're within something and you wanna go back, just go to the quick reference index and it's gonna take you right back to the home page, And that's gonna help you to select the components that you need to research. Now let's talk about some few common repair procedures that maybe collision repairers might have uh, questions on in regards to how to find through Nissan's or Infinity's own repair procedures. The first is non-reusable parts. Now I gotta tell you, one of the things that Nissan Infinity did was Justin Miller with Nissan Infinity he went through and made like a really good list of a lot of the non-reusable parts that Nissan Infinity had. So shout out to you, Justin, for making our lives in collision repair so much easier. And what Justin did was he actually provided this to, for example, CCC and told CCC1, look, we need you to put in the database that these parts are non-reusable. Because Nissan Infinity recognized that the three major estimating systems, you know, CCC, Mitchell, and Autotex were somewhat incomplete. And they didn't always identify these things. So what Nissan Infinity did was they took a list of the most common non-reusable parts and they helped uh, CCC to include that in their database. So big shout out to your team for doing that, Justin. We appreciate it. But let's just say that you can't find whether a part's non-reusable or not in the estimating system. How would you do it? Well, there's two ways and we're going to show you now. Now, in this example here, I went to where it says body interior. Now, this was shared with me with my good friend, Will Latta from Latta Brothers in Minnesota. So in this instance, what we did is we pulled up again a Nissan Armada and what we did is I select the body interior. Now in this specific section here, uh, Lattice Brothers was replacing a quarter panel on this vehicle. And in order to replace the quarter panel, they had to remove the airbag up in the headliner area. In order to get the, headli the airbag out, they had to remove the headliner. In order to remove the headliner, they had to take the A, B, and C pillar trims out. So what Will Lattice did is when he removed the center pillar trim, he looked that up and he went to removal and installation of interior trim pieces. And what he did was he then selected center pillar upper garnish. And after he selected that, what we saw was we saw this big caution that came up. 
Now, one of the things I love about Nissan Infinity is they always put the word caution in red, like red print. So it really jumps out at you. So really, really like that feature about this website. And you'll see right here, it says caution, replace the center pillar upper garnish with a new part after removal. Never reuse a center pillar upper garnish. So in this case right here, ladies and gentlemen, if we had not researched this vehicle, when we removed the center pillar trim to get the headliner out to remove the airbag, replace the quarter panel, we would have put the old one back in. And if we would have put the old one back in, ladies and gentlemen, that would have been an improper and unsafe repair. That's why we must make sure we research every single component that we remove from a vehicle to ensure that it's one time or, or non reusable part. So the first way that Nissan Infinity notified us of this was they used the word caution. Now, the second thing that Nissan Infinity does is they sometimes also have a non reusable part symbol, and that is going to be a black circle with a white X. Again, this was taught to me by my friend Will Laddiff at Laddiff Brothers. And you'll see right here on this center, upper center pillar trim panel, now this is on an Armada as well, you'll see right there it has a black circle with a white X. Anytime you see that in Nissan Infinity Zoning Repair Procedures, ladies and gentlemen, that means it's a one-time use part, and you must replace that part. So again, two ways to know what parts are non-reusable in Nissan Infinity Zoning Repair Procedures. Number one is, I'm going to go back a slide, look under the caution section whenever it says caution. Number two, look for the symbol of a black circle with a white X. Now, you'll see, well, Mike, how do I know that that black circle with a white X means it's non-reusable? Well, Nissan tells us. Look right here, black circle with a white X, always replace after every disassembly. Here's another thing I like about that. You see that little wrench? That tells me there are specific torque specifications for that component. Ladies and gentlemen, it's very, very important that we research the torque specification because sometimes if you go and over tighten a bolt, it could actually, or a nut, it could actually cause damage to it. But in some cases, you may not tighten it enough. So it's important that we absolutely look at the torque specifications and you find this in the OEM repair procedures. Now this black circle with a white X, that tells you the parts are one-time use, and you will not find this in the electronic parts catalog. You will only find this in the OEM repair procedures, and that's why we must research every component that we're going to be removing off of a vehicle. Let's talk a little bit about the restraint system. Now, in this one, we're going to look at the newer model Armada. So keep in mind, this is different than the other one. It doesn't have the PDF look. It has the HTML5 interface. Now, in this model right here, I went to the Nissan Armada, and what I did is I typed in the word seat space belt. So I put in the word seat space belt. And what I did is I put this in the search feature because I wanted to know what Nissan Infinity say about seat belts. And when I selected that, automatically it came up and on the right hand side you'll see where it says seat belt retractor inspection. I was like, okay, wow, let's check this out. Now keep in mind, anything that you see in blue is a hyperlink. So anytime you see something blue on the right hand side, click on that, that's a hyperlink. So what I did was I clicked on inspection and when I opened it up, it says warning. And again, this is what I really love about Nissan Infinity. You know, there's some other OEM manufacturers, everything is just like a black PDF and all the text is in black. So, you know, you got to read through it and make sure you don't miss anything. Well, if you're trying to do this pretty quickly and efficiently, Nissan either uses the word red word caution or they box it out and cover it like this in arms, which is really awesome. And you'll see here what Nissan says. It says warning, inspect all seatbelt assemblies, including retractors and attached hardware after any collision. Nissan Infinity recommends that all seat belt assemblies in use during a collision be replaced unless the collision was minor and the belt show no damage and continue to operate properly. Failure to do so could result in serious personal injury in an accident. Seat belt assemblies not in use during a collision should also be replaced if either damage or improper operation was noted. So it goes down through here and it says, look, you also need to replace them even if the airbags don't deploy, right? Even if they weren't in use. Now, one of the things that Nissan does a great job of as you see right here, it says replace any seat belt if the seat belt is in use at the time of a collision. Now, when I scroll down on this document, one of the things that Nissan also has, it says, look, you know, we understand that we say recommend it. Here's how you test it. So if you go down the bottom of this, when I scroll down, it actually has a specific requirement on how to actually test this seat belt. You'll see right here, it says pull the seat belt out to a length of 500 millimeters. And then it tells me to fix the seat belt at the center pillar. And going all the way down through here, it actually tells me how to inspect it. So it's a very specific procedure. Now, keep in mind, according to our collision advice, who pays for web surveys, less than 22% of the shops are actually inspecting or billing to inspect seat belts. Ladies and gentlemen, you need to do this because you are liable. Now, here's another thing that Will Laddiff shared with me. And that was that as we scroll down, 
Nissan Infiniti actually had a document here that said seatbelt retractor off vehicle check. So I'm gonna go back a slide. This is how I inspect the seatbelt if it's still in the vehicle. If I remove the seatbelt, this is how I would inspect the seatbelt out of the vehicle. So it's really important to understand that based on the specific Nissan or Infiniti you're working on, the inspection process will vary. And that's why you can't just use the same inspection process on every seatbelt. You need to do it specifically how Nissan says you need to do it or Infiniti on that specific gear make and model. Now let's talk about disconnecting the battery. We all know we have to disconnect the batteries a ton, right? You gotta disconnect the battery to put a door on, replace a quarter panel, uh, maybe to on eye a headlight. So what do we gotta do if we disconnect the battery? Well, in this case, I went back up to the search um, feature. And what I did is on the search feature, I typed in the word battery. And what came up, it said precautions. Precautions for removing a battery terminal. Well, that's something I need to know. So I selected it, and here's what I found, ladies and gentlemen, blew me away. Did you know that there's a wait time? That when you disconnect a battery on a, on a Nissan or Infiniti, there is a wait time based on what type of battery is in that vehicle or what type of engines in that vehicle. You'll see here in the first option, it says for vehicles with the engine listed below, remove the battery terminal after a lapse of a specified time. Four minutes, two minutes, 60 seconds. And it says note, ECU may be active for several tens of seconds after the initial switch has been turned off. So you can't just turn the key off and disconnect the battery. You have to wait a specific amount of time. And ladies and gentlemen, if we don't do this, it could either cause damage to the vehicle or it could cause damage to a person uh, that's actually repairing the vehicle. So I didn't know this, but there's a wait time. Now I scroll down a little bit further and here's something else it said. It said, if you look at the bottom arrow, that the removal of a 12 volt battery may cause a DTC detection error. So ladies and gentlemen, a lot of times people ask, well, Mike, do I need to scan a vehicle? It says right here, if you disconnect the battery terminal, it may cause a DTC detection error. Well, guess what? I won't know if there's a DTC detection error if I don't scan the vehicle, because there may not be a warning light for whatever it's talking about. So ladies and gentlemen, you gotta scan the vehicle because when you disconnect the battery, it may cause some diagnostic trouble codes, and that's unavoidable. By the way, if you look in the top right-hand portion of your screen, you'll see a back arrow. In the HTML version, that actually takes you back to the previous screen. Now, you'll also see here when it comes to battery, it says required procedure after a battery is disconnected. I selected that, and it said, look, Mike, if you disconnect a battery, here's all the things on this specific vehicle that may not work. And you may have to go through and do a recalibration or a reinitialization on these things. So, ladies and gentlemen, again, there's not a one size shoe fits all approach. On each specific vehicle, type in the word in the search feature, battery space disconnect, and it comes up on another specific vehicle. It tells me, you know what? The power windows may not work. So if I reconnect the battery, I have to go through and ensure that the power window works. Again, everything on the blue is a hyperlink. So in this case, when I selected that hyperlink, you'll see right here that it says, initialize the system if any of the following work has been done. So if I disconnected the battery, You'll see right here, it says disconnect the battery. If I disconnect the window switch, if I'm replacing a door or, or a door skin, it tells me that I have to do an initialization process. If I don't, the following three items won't work. Auto op operation, anti-pinch, and retain power function. So again, you'll see right here, that's one of the things you may want to search. Now, if I click on a hyperlink, again, I'm going back. If you go up to the top where it says work procedure, when I selected that, it actually gives me a description of how to perform that specific initialization. So you might want to write that word down, anti-pinch, or the word initialization to use that in your search features. Now, again, keep in mind, if you have to reinitialize re the pinch protection, that is a not included operation if you have to remove or replace a door. Let's talk a little bit about the wiring diagrams. Again, this was shared to, with me again by my good friend Will Latta from Latta Brothers, as well as Jake Rodenroth from Aztec. And what we did up here is we went to the top left hand side of the screen and you'll see where it says EWD for electrical wiring diagrams. When I selected that option and I searched, it now gives you different types of things to select. In this case, you'll see where it says 2018 Armada, select wiring diagrams. And we selected the picture where the car's at. When we did that, it showed us all of the different wiring connectors on this specific vehicle. Now, what I really love about this is that when I click on this, and I mouse over any of those, like you see my screenshot, when you mouse over any of those, it tells you what that connector is. So if you need to, you know, you have a vehicle gets hit in the front end and the fog lamp connector gets cut off, I can go right to Nissan Infinity's website, I can look up that specific vehicle, go to EWD, electric wiring diagrams, and I can mouse over this and help me to select the correct part. 
In addition, if you go to some of the other things and you're trying to troubleshoot any wiring problems or electrical problems, your diagram options will be on the left-hand side, such as you see right now. Let's talk about blind spot warning. We know that the vehicle manufacturers are coming out with a ton of accident avoidance features, one of which is the blind spot warning. So in this case, what I did was keep in mind, if you don't put the exact word in, Nissan and Finney's own repair procedures may not find what you're looking for. So what I did is I just put in a partial word, right? I wasn't sure if it was called a blind spot warning or blind spot monitor, so I just typed in blind spot. And when I did that, it actually came up and it told me there were some precautions that I needed to be aware of in regards to this uh, you know, blind spot warning and blind spot intervention system. As I selected that, it tells me I do not strike or damage the areas around the side radar. So if you're going to be repairing a component where this attaches, you absolutely need to remove it. You also see it says do not attach a sticker and, um, or any type of accessory or paintwork near the side radar. So again, these are some really good things that are important to us. And I have to believe also this is what led to Nissan and Infinity coming out with a position statement in regards to the repair of their bumper covers. Let's talk about zero point reset. This is another thing we found. We typed in here the word zero point. Now, a lot of times we know that the OEM manufacturers have uh, seat weights or sensors in the seats to ensure that the airbag is pro uh, poised properly. So in this case, I went up to the search feature and I typed in zero point. When it came up, you see the blue hyperlink that says description and special repair requirement. You'll notice something here that Nissan Infinity says is that whenever I R and I a seat, and I got to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, we R and I a seat a lot. How many times have you R and I a seat to replace a quarter panel or you R and I a seat to a repair, repair, or replace a door post or center pillar or rocker panel? Well, in this case, it says when you remove the seat, you got to go back and do this zero point reset. And ladies and gentlemen, if we don't do this properly, the Air Mac may not be deployed properly. So again, in the essence of time, I'm moving through this rather quickly, but again, look at the blue hyperlink or a purple hyperlink will take me to the procedure. Now in this case, I scroll down, it actually walked me through how to actually do this zero point reset. And it says, when performing the zero point reset, be careful of the items described as per the following. Do not apply excessive vibration to the vehicle. It also says when you're doing this, you have to use the consult. What is the consult? That is the Nissan Infinity OEM factory scan tool. Now, let's talk about the side mirror calibration. We all know that we remove mirrors quite often. You replace a fender, you blend a door, you take the mirror off. So I said, man, what do I got to do if I take a mirror off? And what I did was I put in the word door mirror assembly. Now, keep in mind in the blue box I have here, if you can't what you're look, find what you're looking for, you may be doing the wrong search term. Consider just using a portion of the term and that way it'll bring up more items. In this case, I put in near, door mirror assembly, removal and installation, disassembling assembly. And you'll see right here, it tells me that when I remove the uh, door mirror, it says I actually have to take and perform the camera image calibration. If I refer to description, I click on the blue, which is a hyperlink. It now walks me through all the steps that I need to do to calibrate that mirror. So again, at the end of the day, ladies and gentlemen, even r and in this something as simple as a door mirror for paint could require a calibration to be done. Now, as I go through this and I continue to scroll through here, you'll see that Nissan has a very specific calibration procedure. It tells me I need to check around the view monitor screen. From I go down there, it says select calibrating camera image. And I'm going down through here, and it actually tells me there's a specific target that is required. And you'll see right here that it tells me about the target I need. Now, if you want to purchase this target, that's where you would go to the tools and equipment portion of the website we showed you earlier in the webinar. One of the other things it tells us is that there's a very specific procedure on how to do this. And again, I'm scrolling through this for you. And here's what I found interesting. It says, number one, hang a string with a weight as shown in the figure. Put the points FM0, RM0, mark on the ground at the center of the vehicle. So ladies and gentlemen, it actually says that there's a specific string or what they refer to as a thread and a specific weight that I have to purchase in order to do this calibration. Now, if you don't have this, you need to be taking this to your local Nissan Infinity dealership to ensure that this calibration is done properly. So it's not just a matter of having the proper scan tool. It's a matter of understanding the procedure and having also the targets, or in this case, a specific thread or a weight. Now let's talk a little bit about telematics. One of the things that Nissan Infinity has done is they've done a great job of being connected with, um, you know, what's called Nissan Connect. And that is so the driver can be connected, you know, basically through the internet, so their car is very interactive for them. Now, you'll notice right here, it says Nissan Connect, and if we click on that, it talks about security and convenience. As we see more and more vehicle manufacturers, specifically Nissan Infinity, have a connected car 
that's going to mean some things to us as a collision repairer. So Tiffany, do we have some questions that maybe from the attendees? We do actually. Um, let's see. So one of them says, um, how can we find the bumper repair or replace procedure specifications on damaged bumpers when you were talking about the blind spot monitoring system? Yeah, so um, maybe I'll ask Team Nissan to weigh in on that in Infinity, but my experience has been, number one is you absolutely wanted to look at the position statements that Nissan and Infinity have in regards to bumper covers, especially if it has an accident of winds feature in it. The other thing is when you go into the body repair manual or if you go into the service guide or service manual, you will actually just type in the word bumper and then it will bring up all the different things for you you'll see on a bumper and it'll tell you if there's any hyperlinks to any precautions, whether it's paint or body. So but bottom line is if you want a quick and simple answer, just put the word bumper in the search feature and do that. If not, when you go to the specific section of the body repair manual or the service manual, you can actually see a section that says, um, you know, vehicle components and you can select on bumper and you'll find it there as well. Team Nissan Infinity, do you have any other commentary that we might add to help this person? Mike, this is Justin. You hit it on the head. Um, in this case, for his specific question, uh, that information is in the service manuals under the driver assistance system heading uh, with the subheading of uh, blind spot monitoring. Uh, but you're right, you can also search bumper and look for related uh, topics. Thank you, Justin. Tiffany, let's take one more question before we jump back into the webinar. Uh, the, the next question actually goes back to Nissan. Um, is it okay for them to actually print the documentation for insurers? Hey, Mike, it's Danny. Um, it is okay to print anything out off the Nissan website. And we'd encourage it. Thank you. That's a great question, you know, because a lot of times we worry about, you know, we want to make sure we're, you know, we're not, you know, uh, doing anything that's illegal or immoral and ethical. But if you're subscribing to Nissan and Infinity's website, uh, they're encouraging you to print that out and use that as documentation to reply to the insurance company for the first question is what you're asking for required. So thank you. Let's jump back into our webinar. Again, we recognize that we're coming in on an hour, um, but we've still got a lot of information to cover. If for any reason you have to log off, you will be get emailed a recorded version of this webinar. So let's jump back into this. Um, one of the things we did was we typed in the word telematics into the search feature, and you'll see where it, where it says system description and fail safe. Now, one of the things we have to understand is that vehicles are connected to the internet. Um, they're gonna be able to uh, notify the OEM manufacturer when something's wrong with the vehicle. So in some cases, we may have to disable the system before we begin repairs, so it doesn't start sending false alerts to the vehicle manufacturer because we just some a vehicle. So for Team Nissan and Infinity, uh, for Nissan Connect, is there any process that you're aware of today uh, that a collision repair shop would need to do to disable that system first so it doesn't send any false notifications to Nissan Infinity or the consumer? Is there anything you're aware of that we need to do currently today? Uh, Mike, this is Mark. Uh, unfortunately, I don't know of any, um, but I don't have the telematics team uh, in the meeting here. So I'll have to go back and research that. But as far as I know, uh, there isn't something uh, unique that they have to do. Great. Appreciate that, Mark. And I, I got to tell you, I went through your website in depthly and I cannot find anything. So I believe that's the correct answer. But you know, if we validate, that would be great. So thank you. Let's talk about the steering angle sensor. In this case right here, we typed in the search word, steering angle sensor, and you'll see where it says R&I. It said perform the steering angle sensor neutral position adjustment when the steering angle sensor is removed, installed, or replaced. And now if we click on the hyperlink work procedure, it would tell us how to do that. Now you'll also notice that when I go and scroll down on that same document, it says if I do not do it, anything with an X, I mean, I'm sorry, that if I do remove that uh, component, it says anything with an X is required. So you'll see right here, it says, if I replace the ABS actuator and electric control unit, then I need to uh, do a calibration of the sensor. You also notice if we scroll down, you'll see some other X's. It says, anytime I do these things, I have to do this calibration. And these are components that are not uncommon for collision repairs to remove or replace, especially on a front end collision. Now, you'll also see right here that it requires the use of the Nissan Infinity factory scan, scan tool, the consult, in order to perform this procedure. Now, here's something else that was pointed out to me by Will Laddup. I got to tell you, Will Laddup, you really have made me a fan of this Nissan Infinity OEM repair procedure, so thank you. And that was steering column inspection. So what we did is, we actually typed in steering column. And what it did is it came up and it says inspection after removal. And you'll notice right here, 
In the orange box, it says, measure the length as shown. If a vehicle has been involved in a minor collision, replace the steering column assembly if the outside, if it's outside the standard. So it actually tells us that when a, a, this specific Nissan Armada is in an accident, you need to measure the steering column. And it needs to measure out to the specs that Nissan provides in their own repair procedures. Because what happens is that steering column is made to collapse. And so what happens is, after a vehicle's been in an accident, you need to arm out that steering column and you need to measure it. And if it doesn't meet factory specifications, then it's collapsed. You must replace it, ladies and gentlemen. And I gotta tell you, the only way you can measure it is if you arm eye it. And I gotta tell you, ladies and gentlemen, I'm very concerned as to how many collision repair shops are not researching normal repair procedures and aren't inspecting this as they should. Now let's talk about sectioning procedures. What does Nissan Infinity tell us about sectioning? Well, here's an example where I put in the word sill. Now sill is the term that Nissan Infinity used to describe an outer rocker panel. So I put in the word sill. When I did a search on this, it says replacement procedures. The blue hyperlink says outer sill. And when I do that, that will give me my specific uh, requirements on how to replace this component. Keep in mind that Nissan Infinity state that if they do not have a sectioning procedure published, you must replace the part in its entirety. Now, as you go down here, it also tells us, as we scroll down on the same document, it says that if you cannot find a sectioning procedure, or you're not sure, it says they are indicated in the body repair manual. So you'll see right here that Nissan Infinity says, you'll see where I have the blue arrow, it says if panels are cut in improper portions, body springs cannot be maintained. The allowable positions vary with body structure, panel strength, or shape and different from model to model. So understand that just because a 2017 has a section procedure does not mean that a 2018, and also the replacement procedure could vary based on the vehicle because they may have changed substrates. So you always need to go to the body repair manual tab in order to ensure what the proper section or replacement procedure is. Now let's talk a little about the Nissan LEAF, which is Nissan Infiniti's electric vehicle. 2015 Nissan LEAF. In this case, what we did was, we went to where it said any vehicle, and what we did is we selected where it says Nissan Leaf. So in this case, I pulled up a Leaf because I know a Leaf is an electric vehicle. Now this here, you'll notice this 2017 is in the older version, which is the Adobe PDF. So in this instance, what I did is I went to where it says EV battery system, and I selected that tab. Now again, in this table of contents, you can use the same example I'm giving you for any of the other um, hyperlinks. In this case, I selected EV battery system. That pulls up to my table of contents. It says high voltage precautions. And when I selected that, one of the things I saw here was that there was a very specific procedure for how to disable this electric vehicle hybrid battery before I begin any repairs. You also notice here that it actually says at the very bottom, you'll see where we highlighted the word medical. That really jumped out at me. And when I scrolled down words more, it actually told me that if you have like a pacemaker or anything like that, you should not be dealing with any of those medicals. So anybody that is not concerned or maybe you've had any heart issues in the past or maybe you have any implants, you definitely want to make sure you research those medical precautions when you're working on a hybrid or an electric vehicle. Now let's talk about paint. You know, researching OEM repair procedures isn't just for body mechanical, it's also for paint. So in this case, what I did was on this Nissan Leaf, I went to it said body repair manual. I selected that hyperlink and again, it came up and it gave me some different paint codes for the vehicles. Told me what the paint code was. Is it two stage, three stage, or a pearl? But after that, it said right here, precaution for technicians using medical electric. And what it told me was, is that it says, look, parts with strong magnet is used in this vehicle. Technicians using a medical electric device, such as a pacemaker, must never perform operation in this vehicle as a magnetic field can affect the device function by approaching such parts. So it's really, really important you research this. However, what I also found was where it said pain group. So again, I'm in the body repair manual. From body repair manual, I went to painting booth, and there it told me that on this specific uh, vehicle from Nissan, that when I go to paint the vehicle, that the outer sill or rocker panel temperature cannot exceed 140 degrees Fahrenheit. So if you know that your painter's cranking that heat up in that spray booth to 165 degrees, ladies and gentlemen, you could damage this battery, and then you're going to be buying a new one. So what it says is, if the outer sill temperature, meaning when you go to bake that vehicle, is going to be greater than 140 degrees Fahrenheit, you need to remove the lithium ion high voltage battery beforehand before you place the vehicle in the spray booth. So ladies and gentlemen, on any of these electric vehicles you're doing or hybrid vehicles with Nissan Infinity, you must check the curing temperature every time before you paint the vehicle. What are some other paint considerations? Well, look right here. This was also a Nissan uh, that I was researching. And I typed in the word refinish, and it brought up this example right here about matte color. 
It said matte color repair paint requires a very high level of painting technique since partial touch-up paint and polishing works not uh, possible. That means if you have something with a matte finish, it cannot be blended. So there is no blending. You must paint the entire panel. I also scrolled further throughout the document, and it told me that they had a paint code that was called Ultimate Metal Silver, and it says it's a special paint color. Ladies and gentlemen, that means your typical multiplier for materials is probably not enough, and you may want to consider getting with your painter and submitting an invoice. You also see that it tells me that that same Ultimate Metal Silver is a four-coat finish. So therefore, it's a four-stage, ladies and gentlemen. So therefore, understand that currently CCC and Mitchell do not have a paint formula for four-stage. Autotex says it's the same as three-stage. And you'll also notice that on this same paint code, Ultimate Metal Silver, I scroll down the bottom, Nissan says always perform trial painting several times. It says several times. So ladies and gentlemen, set up and doing a test panel or a letdown panel is a not included operation. You also see here, it talks about something called a scratch sealed. So it says right here on Nissan Infinity, it says precautions for repair coating. A caution label is attached to the backside of the hood for models to which scratch shield is applied. Be sure to check the caution label when performing paint work. I never knew, ladies and gentlemen, that if I looked on the underside of the hood of the vehicle, it could have a label that says scratch shield, use only approved refinished materials. Ladies and gentlemen, I gotta tell you, I thought it was a good estimator, but I gotta tell you, I never knew this. So make sure as an estimator, you're looking on the underside of the hood, and if you see this decal that says scratch shield, Make sure you only use approved or finished materials. And if you can't find this label, if you have to replace the hood, make sure you order a new one from Nissan or Infiniti. Now, again, we talked about hybrid vehicles, but let's talk about a 12 volt battery, right? In this case, I typed in the word battery. I go to a body repair manual, and let's just use for an example, the door. Well, it says right here in the table of contents, when I go to work on the door, I need to have a precaution for disconnecting or removing the battery. When I select on that, You'll notice that it says down here, precaution for removing the 12 volt battery. And look right above that what I boxed. It said copy this page and put it after folding it on the roof of the vehicle in service. So what Nissan has is, Nissan actually has a document that they want you to print out of their own repair procedures and place on the roof of the vehicle that says this is a high voltage vehicle, repair in progress, do not touch. Person in charge and you would place your name of whoever's in charge of that vehicle. So again, this really tells me that Nissan Infinity goes that extra mile when it comes to safety and concern for technicians. You also notice that it says on the next slide, as I scroll down, it says that the battery is removed within five minutes after the power switch is turned off, plural DTCs may be detected. So ladies and gentlemen, when we disconnect the battery, this is just another case where Nissan and Infinity say we must scan the vehicle because when you disconnect the battery, it says multiple DTCs can be detected and you will not know unless you scan the vehicle. Now let's talk a little bit about the 2016 Nissan GTR. And by the way, we've got about another 15 minutes and this thing will be wrapped up. On the 2000 Nissan GTR, which is the Nissan GTR, which is a Nissan that's made out of aluminum carbon fiber, we wanted to see a little bit about what Nissan Infinity said about this. And one of the things that we saw was, first of all, that Nissan actually does the training for this vehicle through iCar. So Mark or Justin, Team Nissan Infinity, could you share a little bit with us about the Nissan GTR and how shops could get training on that? So this is a three module program that we started a few months ago with ICAR. Um, it does go towards continuing education and um, talks about all, all aspects of repair that you'd run into on the GTR. Okay, so thank you. So if they want to get training then Justin, they would actually contact, one of the things they could do is you look at your screen, you'll see, go to ICAR, www.i-car.com. From there, you will select the tab that says educational programs. Once you select educational programs, it will drop down and it will say OEM training requirements. And that's where you can select Nissan and you will have access to these training courses, whether it's online or in-person training that will need to be completed for you to be GTR certified. So Justin and Mark, it would be an accurate statement that there could be a shop that is Nissan certified, but not necessarily GTR certified. Is that correct, sir? That is correct. The GTR certification does require uh, specific uh, tools and equipment. Uh, so just taking the GTR course through ICAR does not make a shop GTR certified. And also, Mark, for our insurance partners that are also on the line, for our insurance friends, uh, there, are there restricted part sales on the Nissan GTR just so that if an insurance appraiser is writing an estimate on that, should they be aware of that, sir? 
Um, there's a list of parts on GTR that are restricted to the dealer, not the shop. So shops who want to order select GTR parts have to uh, do additional legwork uh, to submit paperwork to the dealership to qualify to get those parts. Does that help? Yes, sir, it does. And last but not least, Justin, because this is great insight, is let's say that I'm an insurance appraiser and I'm writing an estimate on GTR, and I want to make sure that, that that card goes to a shop that's certified. Is there a place that I can go to as an insurer where I could identify uh, what shops are approved or trained to actually fix this vehicle? Sure. So you go to our consumer website, which is collision.nissanusa.com. Again, that's our um, consumer website where uh, users can find a shop near them. We have a specific GTR certified tab at the top, which would list out our certified locations on that website. Okay, thank you. Is that Sarah by any way? Was that Sarah? That is Sarah. That was yes. Sarah okay. yep. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, I want to say thank you to Sarah for um, her assistance and helping us to promote this webinar. So thank you, Sarah. So one of the things we found was when we actually researched uh, the Nissan GTR uh, through Nissan's Tech Info website, I found something that was really um, kind of eye-catching to me. And I knew this because when I had my shops, we were Nissan GTR certified, but I'd forgotten about it. And you'll notice right here that when we go into it, it says precaution for aluminum die casting parts. And it says crack inspection. If the vehicle is damaged, visually inspect aluminum die casting parts for deformation and carry out the crack inspection. This inspection is carried out using dye penetrant testing agents, cleaning solution, penetrant liquid, and developer. So again, ladies and gentlemen, I'm no way am I insinuating that we want to nickel and dime insurance carriers uh, because I am insurance friendly with that. But just understand, ladies and gentlemen, people often ask me, is this a not included operation? And it absolutely is, ladies and gentlemen. Understand that sometimes you can have cracks that are so small and minor that your eye visually cannot see them in an aluminum substrate. And that's why Nissan wants you to do this specific procedure um, on a Nissan GTR. Again, you can find this in the OM repair procedures. Now, what about if you can't find what you're looking for? Because I always get asked that question. Mike, I just can't find it. So what do I do? Ladies and gentlemen, I got to tell you, Nissan Infinity have been great in answering this question. The first is, if you can't find what you're looking for, you know, you obviously always want to use the search feature in the service manual. So again, go to Nissan or Infinity Zone Repair Procedures, and you want to search for a component, right, or a certain procedure. Now, if you can't find that, your next option is, is to go to www dot i dash car dot com when you go to i dash car dot com you're going to see a section that says technical inquiries and when you select that there's an option called ask icar now when you go in there and you email that you can actually email icar directly and because icar has a relationship with nissan infinity they will attempt to get you know, provide you with the answer it's been my experience and uh, icar generally answers those questions as long as it's normal business hours generally within two hours or less so iCar has done a great job of that. Now, listen, if iCar can't find what you're looking for and you still can't find an answer and you're a certified collision center, again, that's one of those advantages to be a Nissan Infinity certified, you can email them directly at NNA Collision Repair Network at Nissan-USA.com. And the Nissan Infinity will work with you to expedite that process. Now, again, this email address, ladies and gentlemen, can only be used if you're a certified collision center. Now, if your iCar doesn't know and you're not a certified collision center, then what you will see is you will see a form in the Nissan and Infinity OEM repair procedures, much like what you see on the right-hand side of your screen, which says help make this service manual better. And it's on the third page of the service manual. And what you can do is you can complete this form and you can forward it back to Nissan and Infinity by either mail or fax, and they will work on getting you an answer in a timely manner. So again, there you have it. We have three options so far. Um, use the service manual, meaning the OEM repair procedures. Number two is go to iCar. Number three, if you're certified, you have a direct email link. And if you're not certified, you actually have an inquiry form you can submit. Now, here's something else that Nissan Infinity has. And Justin and Mark, maybe you and your team can weigh on this a little bit. Identifix hotline. Can you share with us, Team Nissan Infinity, a little bit about what this is? And ladies and gentlemen, you might want to screenshot this page right here until you get the video. So Mark and Justin, can you share with us what this feature is? Yeah, so uh, as a way to help uh, shops both uh, mechanically or uh, collision, uh, if they need help uh, identifying a procedure or, or having a, maybe they have a tough time uh, diagnosing a vehicle, uh, they can call uh, Identifix at that the number there. 
uh, and it's a complimentary service uh, that Nissan and Infinity uh, does for the shops. So uh, I know there's some shops out there that may have uh, uh, may subscribe to Identifix. This is a free service, though. So if you use this phone number, uh, there would not be a, a fee or a charge uh, to the shop. They can help you uh, diagnose uh, any uh, maybe hard to uh, repair situation and get you uh, down the right path to that correct repair. So, so Mark, I just want Mark, I mean, sometimes, Mark, things sound too good to be true. So is this available to um, just certified collision centers or anybody in the collision repair industry? Um, it's available to uh, the certified collision repair network and anyone else. So we make it available oh to God. the whole industry. I know, unbelievable. It is unbelievable, Mark, because I got to tell you, um, I, I mean, I'm just amazed at this, Mark. I mean, this is an awesome resource. Ladies and gentlemen, if you got off this webinar early, you missed out on this, and this is awesome. So high five to the Nissan and Infinity team. This is incredible. Now, let's talk about a couple other helpful websites from Nissan Infinity as we try to wrap this up. One is www.collision.nissanusa.com. Now, Sarah, I believe this is the website you referred to earlier that if an insurer was trying to find a certified facility for a Nissan GTR, they would go to. Is that correct, ma'am? Yes, that's correct. All right, thank you. So again, this is a great website that uh, collision repairers may want to use as well. Now, we're not going to go over this in depthly because we're running short on time here, but www.collision.nissanusa.com, uh, you'll see here where Nissan has all their position statements listed. So that's one great thing on this website, as well as a ton of other things. You'll see on the left, they've got some consumer marketing materials, accident assistance, and genuine parts um, advantage. So I encourage you to check out this website, and we're going to cover this website in depthly on our part two webinar. This is again where you'll find the OEM repair procedures, I'm sorry, excuse me, the OEM position statements on that website. For instance, in this case, where Nissan says they did not support any repair, body filler application, or paint work on the rear bumper cover and the general area of the side radars. Nissan service manuals clearly state, do not attach a sticker, including transport, parent material, and accessory or paintwork near the side radar. So for the gentleman that answered the question earlier, this would answer your question. Now, I will tell you, ladies and gentlemen, we've got to be really cautious, though, that we don't become too dependent and reliant on OEM position statements. Because just because an OEM doesn't have a position statement doesn't mean that they don't say somewhere in their OEM repair procedures how to fix the vehicle safely and properly. So OEM position statements cannot and should not replace the emphasis and importance of research and repair procedures directly through Nissan Infinity's website. Now, a couple other websites available from Nissan Infinity, and that is www.partsadvantage.nissanorinfinityusa.com. And this is a website that has to do with all of Nissan and Infinity's parts programs. So Mark and Justin or Sarah, could you maybe comment a little bit on this website and some of the advantages for collision repairers in utilizing this website? And Mike, this is Justin. I'd say, uh, you know, this is built to face independent repair facilities. It has a lot of really good resources on it, a lot of links to useful tools. So I'd say get on there and play around with it whenever they get a break at work. Yeah, so um, thank you for that. So I would encourage you as a collision repairer to utilize this website and play with a little bit. And um, I'm going to show you one of my favorite things about this in just a moment. And keep in mind, in our part two of this webinar, we're going to cover in depthly what options and resources are available on this website. So if you go to where it says collision, when you select the collision drop-down tab, what do you see there? It says Nissan Body Repair Manual. So for those of you um, that uh, for some reason, you, you know, you, you, your boss won't pay for you to access Nissan Infinity Repairs, which they should, because ladies and gentlemen, it's the only way to ensure safe and proper repair. You do have the ability to go right here under collision, the Nissan Body Repair Manual, and you can access some of the Body Repair Manual documents. Now keep in mind, this free version will not allow the hyperlinks to interface, and this free version is going to be limited. It's not going to have all that stuff like on disconnecting the battery and uh, some of your other things that you need to know. So, ladies and gentlemen, understand uh, this is a, you'll see in this example, there's 276 pages in the body repair manual, but the interface doesn't work. So, while we appreciate Nissan Infinity offering this free version, I still believe you need to subscribe to Nissan Infinity's website directly. It's the only way to ensure a safe and proper repair. Some of the other resources you'll notice on this is when you go to the resource tab on that same uh, Website, you'll see that it says down at the bottom, videos. And it's a quick video on how to navigate Nissan's technical service manuals. You also see here where it says collision repair videos. And they've got some free collision repair videos um, on how to navigate uh, Toyota's website. I'm sorry, excuse me, Nissan's website. I apologize. And also as well as a video on their pre and post repair scans and recalibration. 
So again, ladies and gentlemen, these are free resources available to you from Nissan Infinity on how to actually navigate their website as well as how to do some of the post pre and repair scans. Now, again, let's talk about parts. Um, Nissan and Infinity both have two free websites and that is nissanusaparts.nissanusa.com www.parts.infinityusa.com. So two different websites, one for Nissan Infinity. These websites are free. Ladies and gentlemen, when I write an estimate, I like to use dual monitors and I'll have my estimating system up on one screen and I'll have my Nissan or Infinity parts website on the other screen. And what I'll do is I will put the year, make and model of a vehicle in and it allows me to look at the vehicle graphics of every vehicle. This is the same thing that the Nissan or Infinity dealership would look at. So ladies and gentlemen, understand this, right? When uh, you're writing an estimate, unfortunately, CCC Metro Auto Techs quite often do not have all the parts in the database. I'm sure there's some people out there going, amen. I'm sure you've had that time where you're writing an estimate, you can't find the part, you gotta call the dealership, they may put you on hold and you're like, do you have this part? And they send over the graphic and you're like, that's what I need. Ladies and gentlemen, you don't have to do that anymore. Go to this website while you're writing your estimate, and if you can't find a part you need in the uh, estimating system, just navigate yourself through this Nissan uh, parts website or Infinity, and you can see the exact same thing your dealership's gonna look for, and it's gonna give you the part number, the part name, and even the price of the part, ladies and gentlemen. You'll see here's for an example, where we looked up an example of a rear tail lamp on this Nissan Maxima, and it actually showed us the exact diagrams on that vehicle. You also can go to this, and there's another great feature on this, and this says accessories. So if I go to Nissan or Infinity's parts website, and I select accessories, it shows me any OEM repair um, uh, accessories that may be on this vehicle. So a lot of times you have that customer that comes in and they got that stainless steel emblem or special wheels, and you're like, that's not in my database. Well, it very well could be an OEM accessory from Nissan or Infinity. And if you select this option like exterior or interior, it helps you to see all the accessories that that vehicle owner may have installed on their vehicle. This also helps us, our parts person, to mirror match the parts properly to ensure we get the right part the first time. Now let's talk a little bit about as we wrap this up with Nissan certification. Well, first of all, ladies and gentlemen, some of you may not be Nissan or Infinity certified. So why should you be? Well, ladies and gentlemen, first of all, let's talk about some of the benefits. Number one is you get preferred parts pricing. That helps you to you know, price match against aftermarket or used parts. It also allows you to differentiate your shop because you get some marketing tools from Nissan Infinity that you can use on your website, social media, billboards, or signage in your lobby. You also can gain new referral sources. That means Nissan Infinity works very closely with their customer base, meaning people that drive Nissan Infinities as well as their dealership to drive more work to your door. You also get a free access to Nissan's own repair procedures and you don't have to pay for it and there's also the possibility that you could qualify for some other OEM certification. Now, what do you do? If you want to be Nissan or Infinity certified, well, the first thing is you have to get enrolled through getnissancertified.com. You will have to provide some specific business information and where they assess your business capabilities. And then there's actually an evaluation done of your shop and some scoring and you get an on-site inspection. And ladies and gentlemen, did you know you know, in today's world, everybody complains and says, well, ladies, a lot of these OEM programs don't have any teeth. But well, did you know that with Nissan and Infinity, only one out of 10 shops meet or exceed the requirements for Nissan certification? Also, some other benefits. You get preferred parts price stretching, um, excuse me, preferred parts pricing through OPS. You also get listed on the Nissan or Infinity body shop locator. Uh, you get marketing materials. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the list goes on and on and on. Here's also something else we got, which is complimentary towing. So for our team, our friends at Team Nissan Infinity, can you talk a little bit about what do you mean by complimentary towing? Does that mean that if a customer wrecks their car, their car gets towed for free to a Nissan or Infinity shop? Yeah, so the way uh, that works, typically uh, when an when a owner or a customer purchases a Nissan, uh, they have roadside assistance, uh, which is uh, available for a certain period of time with their new vehicle purchase. However, in the event of a collision, it doesn't matter what year or uh, uh, model of that vehicle that you have, uh, we will pay, Nissan and Infinity will pay to tow that vehicle directly to a certified collision repair network within 50 miles of that uh, incident. So uh, the owner would have to call up our, uh, our uh, roadside assistance phone number, let them know that they were in a collision, needed a collision tow, uh, and then we take care of everything from there. So we'll give them the uh, choices of the nearest uh, certified collision repair network shops, 
that customer can choose which one they want to tow it to, and we will take care of the uh, the tow for that customer to that certified uh, facility. Thank you, Mark. So I got to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, um, I, you know I'm a big fan of Liz Stein at Assured Performance Network, and a shout out to Liz if she's on this webinar. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're not sure how to leverage all these different uh, marketing strategies and, and, and just all these resources available to you, I encourage you to reach out to Liz Stein and she can walk you through it or connect with whoever your local Nissan rep is. So in summary, ladies and gentlemen, uh, as I shared with you, you were nice enough to stay on this webinar for 90 minutes, ladies and gentlemen, and I appreciate that so much. And if you had to jump off earlier, I well, hope you're still watching this webinar that we recorded for you. We're going to, ladies and gentlemen, for the first time, we're actually going to do a follow-up to this webinar. We're going to do a Nissan webinar part two. And what we're going to do is we're going to do a deeper dive into some of the other resources that Nissan Infinity provide for you. So, for example, instead of just the service manual, we're going to take you through the quick reference guide. We're going to take you through the first responders guide, the bodybuilders guide, and all those cool tabs you see on the right-hand side of your screen. We're also going to take you through uh, the Nissan USA collision repair website. And we're going to help you understand more about the accident assistance program and how you can market that to your consumers. So lots more saved up for this next webinar. So ladies and gentlemen, we apologize if we did not get to all of your questions. It's always our goal to do that, but we have so much content to cover. So what we ask is that if you had a question and your question did not get answered, but you texted that question to Tiffany and you made sure that she has your name as well as your organization, what we will do is Collision Advice will work with Nissan and Infinity. Tiffany will type up all of those questions and she will email them to us and we will do our best to answer your questions and you will get that in a Word document. So what will happen is after this webinar, uh, once we edit it, you will get a recorded li a link to uh, for this webinar where it was recorded so you can watch it and share it with your team or your staff as well as we will compile all the answers in the Word document and you'll get that as well for any questions we didn't get to. Our next webinar, ladies and gentlemen, will be on Thursday, May 24th at 2 p.m., and that will be Ford, and we appreciate Ford's support on that. In addition, we'll be working very fast with Nissan Infinity and the team there uh, to help us get a date set up for this uh, Nissan Infinity uh, Part 2, and we also want to remind you that if you've missed any of our prior webinars, they're all available to you for free in the industry, and they're available on the CollisionAdvice.com website or the SECA website. So, Tiffany, uh, let's take one more question here, or maybe two, before we wrap it up here in the next three minutes. Do you have another one or two questions you can ask us? Um, so, I do. Um, I have a couple people asking if to become Nissan certified, can you only go through Assured Performance, or is there another way to become Nissan certified? Yeah, so uh, to, to become certified, uh, you do have to go through uh, Assured Performance. Uh, there are vendors that uh, helps us with uh, inspections of the shop. Uh, again, please understand that this is Nissan's program, though. It's not a sure performance program. So I just want to make sure that you're aware of that. We just use the sure performance, again, as a facilitator. Uh, but uh, a lot of the stuff that we do with the Nissan program uh, is outside of the Assured Performance Network. So uh, while, we're, again, uh, we support the use of them. They, they did a great job of, of bringing other OEs together uh, to help build value out there for the industry. Uh, and again, they're our facilitator to help us uh, oversee our program and make sure that they can get the shop inspections done uh, in a timely manner. So yes, that is the way to do it. Uh, and we appreciate uh, anyone that's out there that's looking to become certified uh, to jump on that because we are reaching a uh, uh, full build out of our network. Uh, as we uh, move forward here the next uh, over this next five, six, to eight months. Well, we appreciate that, Mark. Uh, can just really quick, can any an, any independent shop become certified? Uh, yes, it is open to both dealer-owned and independent shops uh, that qualify uh, to become certified and meet those certification requirements. Um, uh, there are some geographical requirements that we do have. Uh, so while everyone uh, is able to participate, there might already be markets that are locked down. Uh, so we would have to look at uh, the individual shops, but it is open to all uh, dealer-owned and independent shops currently. Thank, Thank you, Mark. Thank you. Well, I'm sorry to everybody that we did not get to your questions. I see Tony from 3C uh, Body Shop in Columbus, Ohio. Uh, you had some questions about uh, welding and welders, and we'll make sure we submit that to the team at Nissan Infinity and work on getting you an answer. 
So again, for those of you that attended the webinar today, we're very sorry that we uh, could not get to all of your questions, but we are committed to do that and we'll email it out with the link. So we just launched a poll and the question is, did you learn something today that you did not know before? So if you just take a moment uh, to take that poll, it looks like 41% of the members have voted and said, yes, they did. And again, please also understand, uh, you will get an email survey asking you, do you have any suggestions for our webinars on how to make them better? We're really trying hard to keep them less than to an hour for you, ladies and gentlemen, but we just haven't been able to do it. There's so much great content out there. So we're hoping that you find value in these webinars. Uh, Justin, Mark, uh, Dan, Sarah at Nissan Infinity, we can't thank you enough uh, for your support of this webinar. Uh, we went 90 minutes and we still have 512 people that have joined us with this. And uh, we just appreciate everybody. So it uh, looks like we're going to close the polls down. And it looks like 56% of the people took the poll. And we have 100% unanimous that they actually found value in this webinar today and got something out of it. So ladies and gentlemen, this is Mikey Anderson of Collision Advice. Uh, this is Tiffany Driggers of Collision Advice and the team at Nissan Infinity. And we just want to say thank you for your dedication to take 90 minutes to learn to do the right thing. So Mark and Justin, Sarah, thank you so much. And Tiffany, thank you. And we'll look forward to seeing your recorded version of the webinar, as well as a typed up document with answers to your questions. If we can help you at all, please contact us at Collision Advice at www.collisionadvice.com. Thank you and have a great day.